We praise, praise God for being here this morning. morning back in the, the house of prayer again. So we thank God for his goodness. This is St. James, true church of God in Christ of the apostles, faith and doctrine. Uh, and we're just glad to uh, be in the house of the Lord uh, where the word of the Lord is going on, knowing that this is the thing that builds us up. And according to the scripture, it gives us an inheritance among them that are sanctified. And that's where I want to be. Amen. I want to be a, a, among God's people. I want to be counted worthy to be among God's people. And I understand in order for me to do that, I got to understand God's way. I got to under, understand his will. And I got to understand who his people are, who are the ones that are teaching. And then I got to continue in, in what they have taught. Yeah. So I understand all of, all of those things. And this is what we're here for this morning. We know the word of the Lord. It is pure. It is right. And this is the thing that God is you know, aligned with. And that is his word. A lot of people are serving in, in all kinds of different reformations. A lot of people are serving, you know, based on what their conscience thinks. But I want to serve according to what the word of God says. Right. And I, I want to form my life to fit it. And I don't want to form the word to fit me. I don't want to change things to fit me, but I want to be in the word of God. And whatever that means and whatever it takes, I want to be that. Mm. I want to climb to that. So we truly thank God for that. I always want to give honor to our great pastor. Elder Dennis Jefferson and his wife being here this morning. I give honor to my wife and certainly the family, the uh, loved ones that are here this morning in the house of God. And also the ones that, that uh, tune in by way of live stream, we appreciate you. And I know sometimes people tune in when it's live and sometimes people catch us later on. But the word of God is good and it lives. That's right. It doesn't matter when you hear it or, or whether you were hearing it when it was just going out. It, it is good and is right for us. You know, I wasn't there when, when Peter was was preaching on the day of Pentecost, but that word has affected me. The, the word, not just because it was Peter, but because it's the truth and God's power is in it. And that's what we're saying this morning. We're here just as ambassadors of this New Testament, uh, this word of God that he has for us. We're ambassadors unto Christ. And we want to bring what he has for us and let him be the power. We just want to plant another man water but let God give the increase. And we That's want him right. to increase your life. Yeah. We want him to provide increase in your life yeah. through this word of God. Right now, we're just going to go to the throne of grace, another word of prayer. I ask that you join with us. Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you, O God, for your goodness, your mercy. Lord, we, we thank you for all things. Lord, we're going through tragic times this day and time, Lord Jesus. But we know that you're the answer, you're the way. Your truth is still the truth. And as the scriptures say, the truth is in Jesus. It's still in Jesus. So we have our hope and our confidence in you, O oh God. We ask that you be with us this morning in this study, Lord Jesus. Help us and humble us, Lord, in your word, Lord Jesus. And help us get an understanding, Lord Jesus, that, that we all might live better, live better lives, pleasing in your sight, Lord Jesus. And we know if we're living pleasing in your sight, that we are light unto the world, Lord. Be with us and guide us, O oh God. Help us, Lord Jesus, in these tragic times. And Lord, we pray, Lord, know that there are many sick among us. There are bereaved families today, Lord. We ask that you look on each and every one, Lord Jesus. There are many that are suffering with this COVID-19. Lord, we ask that you help, that you bless, Lord Jesus. Ease ailments, Lord Jesus. Help breathing, oh God. Help more to survive this pandemic, oh God. And help more souls, Lord Jesus, be unified on, on stopping the spread of this, oh God. We need you today, Lord Jesus. We need you every hour, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we pray for the leadership of this movement, oh God. Look on, look on the leadership of this true church of God in Christ, Lord Jesus. Help us, O oh God. Help our hearts, our hearts and our mind, Lord Jesus, to think and to do the things that's pleasing in your sight, that we may move the church on to perfection, Lord Jesus. We need you today, Lord Jesus. We need you every hour. And Lord, we pray for this land, this country, and we pray for, for, for com countries that are in turmoil and in conflict today, Lord Jesus. We pray for ones that, Lord Jesus, have been displaced by the storms, O oh God. You're able to do all things. You're the answer, O oh God. So we're trusting in you and hoping in you, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord Jesus, be with us and guide us, O oh God, until your soon return. In Jesus' most holy name we pray and ask. Amen and thank God. Amen. So we're thanking God this morning. Let's go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Just want to get kind of into the word of God just a little bit. Uh, we hear Bishop Jefferson, he teaches at Ephesians 4 and 11 uh, a lot of times uh, and, and talks about those gifts that are in the church and the reason that they're here. And we'll just echo just a little bit of that, and then we want to go on. I want to get to the, uh, the, the 13th verse and, and move on from there. But letting, a, letting each and every one of us know that there's a purpose for your life. Mm. 
Mm. There's a purpose for you. You know, purpose for, for all of our lives in the body of Christ. That's right. In the body of Christ. And these are the things that we got to understand that, that we have a work to do. And I know everybody thinks that everybody's supposed to be preachers. Everybody's supposed to prophesy. Yes. Right? Everybody's supposed to have a tongue. But the Bible didn't say so. It didn't, didn't, didn't say that everybody's supposed to do that. But don't you know that everybody does have a gift? That's right. That God has given that we can use to help edify this body of Christ. And that's what I want to just talk a little bit on this morning. Just kind of look at what that looks like. What it looks like. Mm -hmm. So you got that Ephesians 4 and 11. Start right there. And he gave some apostles. The Bible said he gave some apostles. And some prophets. Come on. And some evangelists. And some pastors and teachers. Read on. For the perfecting of the saints. Yes. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Right. Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. So that was for the work of the ministry. Right. Mm -hmm. That was for the perfecting of the body of Christ. But read the 10th verse. I think that's where I, I want it. No, <laughs> it's not 8th verse is where I want to start. Wherefore he saith, when, when he ascended up on high... He led captivity captive. God led captivity captive. Mm -hmm. The things that was holding us down. He, he, oh, death had hold of us. Yeah. Men all their lifetime feared death and wouldn't walk in God properly because death had hold on them, had a grip on them. From the days of Adam until uh, Christ, death had a grip on all mankind. Right? Mm -hmm. Come on. And gave gifts unto men. God gave gifts unto men. Mm -hmm. Now that he ascended, what is, it, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Right. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Right. And when he started filling all things, that's when he gave the, the gifts of giving some apostles and some pastors and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. But then he said above, he gave gifts unto men. He gave gifts unto, to, to others as well. It wasn't just those gifts. Those gifts were for the work of the ministry, mm -hmm. right? Yes. To, for the perfecting of, of the body of Christ, yes. for the edifying of the body of Christ. But don't you know your humility is a gift? That's right. And it's for the edifying of the body of Christ, Yes. right? Having a gift of peace. Mm -hmm. That's a good gift to have. You might not, might not get any scriptures to do that, but you're edifying by the life that you're living and what you bring in the room. When confusion is about it, right? Mm -hmm. The gift of love. Some people have the gift of love. Some have the gift of faith. But all of these things come forth to edify the body. That's right. The body. You know, the one scripture in uh, St. John said that God is a spirit. And we that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. That's right. Right? That same God that created the heavens and the earth, in, in St. John, the first chapter, it talked about he took on the form of a body, yes, right? Amen. Took that body off, and then he said he was going to bring a comforter. Would leave us comfortless. Mm -hmm. Then he came again in the form of that comforter. Mm -hmm. Well, that comforter got in flesh. Mm -hmm. They couldn't see. It. He came in a body because they couldn't see that spirit. Yes. Couldn't see that spirit. We could right. see the power of that spirit in, in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You could see the power of it, but you couldn't see that spirit. Well, when Jesus Christ went on, 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 on back, caught a cloud and went on home, then he sent forth the comforter unto mankind. That's you and I. Uh -huh. That's right. That spirit is going to take the form of a body again yep. within us. Mm -hmm. And all of these things come together to make the body of Christ. And it's going to have the fruits to justify that. So let's read on 13th verse. We can, we can start going there, 13th verse. Till we all come in, come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. So all of us going to come in the unity. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask some of my grandchildren here. What, my, what does unity mean? Coming together. coming together. And coming together is what? What do we want to come together as? One. 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 We want to come together as one. Yeah. We come together in the unity. Unity of what? Come into, the, come into the unity of the faith. The oneness of the faith. Mm -hmm. You know, there's but one body. One body. Not, there's not, not two or three bodies out there. Uh, 
Give me the fifth verse of this. Ephesians 1, uh, 4 and 5. Yes. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Give me the fourth verse. There is one body. One body. It's only and, one. Yes. So all of these things, all of these gifts that God sent forth in the earth, yes. in mankind, in you and in I, it is for to make that one body. That's right. That oneness, that one body, the unity. Mm -hmm. As Sister Jayla said, the unity of the faith, yes. to be made one. That's right. Right? Come together it is one thing. Fifth verse, come on and read mm -hmm. it. One Lord. It's one Lord. One faith. Yes. One baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all mm. and through all and in you all. And we're not going to escape being that one body. If you're in God, that's the only possibility we have to be. Is in him or out of him. That's right. Part of his body or not part, or excluded from his body. Mm -hmm. And I know people have all kinds of arguments, want to have big debates over all these different kinds of things. But either you're part of God's body or you're not. That's right. I ain't sitting here wasting up time, squabbling over a whole lot of things, when all I want to do is get people to be a part of God's body. If we can get that, if you can get God's spirit, you can be part of his body. And the, and the, the scriptures have concluded, except we have God's spirit, we're none of his. We don't belong to him. And that's why I'm not sitting here for a bunch of argument, you know, a lot of debate. Let's just get to be a part of God's body. That's right. You know, you come here with a lot of debate, and I say, well, if you're living free from sin and you're part of God's body, I, I, nothing for me and you to argue about. Mm -hmm. Do that. Perfect the saints. Right. Edify God's body. Mm -hmm. Get to be a part of 13th verse. You can come on through that. Unto a perfect man. Right. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We got to get to be where Christ, where the, the, the stature, and what Christ looks like. What he is like. We've got to come to the fullness of that. And the Bible said so. And, and it wouldn't give us these things if we couldn't do that. Because it's no longer I. And that's why I'm not trying to get everybody just to, to, to chase, uh, hide him from things, hide him from sin. Get in God and, and the spirit will get you free from sin. Mm -hmm. That is the only way we're going to get free from it. You know, a lot of people got all, all these carnal ordinances just like they had in the days of old. A lot of carnal washings, a lot of carnal ordinances, right? Even sometimes in the dress code, people make it just real carnal just about the dress. You need to dress modest. Yeah. You need to. But you'll have some people that, that's got a dress dragging the floor because that's an ordinance that's been given them but still won't walk free from sin. Mm, that's right. Attitude wrong, mm -hmm. right? No peace nowhere in their life. Right. But just look in the part, and that's what I'm encouraging us to do. Let's get in God and let God do the work. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. And we're going to get in him by following his word and, and following the people that has his word. We're not, we're not going to get to God without a preacher. And I don't care what level you're on. If you're preaching, you're going to have to get to God through a preacher. Mm -hmm. You understand? God has given us leadership, and we're going to work through that. That's right. If we're of God, if we're not, you're not humble enough. You're not humble enough to be in his body. We got to be in God's body. Read on where you left off. 14th verse. 14th verse. That we verse. henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning and craftiness. Listen to what he's saying. Now that we're getting in God's body and we're coming into the unity of the faith, as she said, in unity, there's only one. Mm -hmm. And then the scripture up above, the fourth verse said, there's only one body. That's right. So he said, if you're in that one body and you're in that one faith, there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. If you're in that one thing, don't be tossed to and fro with all these other winds of doctrine. Right. Give me Galatians 1 and verse 6. Don't be tossed, don't be bounced around with all these doctrines and things that people are coming up with daily. Coming up with daily, new doctrines, mm -hmm. new theories, new visions. Instead of continuing in faith that they've been taught. Right. New vision, new doctors. Galatians 1 and 6. 1 and 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ said, unto another gospel. And then it said, which is not another. Not another gospel. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to be tossed to and fro to that's going to be right? What, are the, what is it you're going to jump on out of righteousness to get more righteousness? What is it you're going to jump on or get into that is more holy than holiness. 
Either we're in God's one body or we're outside of it. Amen. That's right. And I'm encouraging, let's get in it. Yeah. Let's get it. Let's find God's body. Let's, let's, let's verify God's body by the fruit thereof. Because I'm telling you, people will tell you, well, you ain't in God's body unless you had a tongue. Well, there's a lot of folk got a real good tongue, but they don't have the fruits of the Spirit. They don't have a life backing up that the Spirit is dwelling in them, mm -hmm. that they are part of God's body. And I wouldn't follow that across the street. You understand? Mm -hmm. We've got to prove this thing out. Bible talked about Thessalonians, talked about proving all things. Yes. And hold fast to that which is good. And we're part of God's body. Let's prove it out. That's right. Prove it out by the life that you live. Yes. Right? Read on uh, back to 14 first, Ephesians 4, 14. That we henceforth be no more children. Tossed, no longer. Tossed to and fro. And carried about with. Go ahead. Carried about with every wind of doctrine by the yes. of men. Yes. And cunning and craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. They, they are waiting on you. Mm -hmm. And we got the word. Let me show you. This is what the scripture said, but this is what he meant. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like Peter and Paul had to have a hype man to come after them. <laughs> yeah, this is, what, this is what Peter and Paul said, but this is what he meant. Let me show you. I'm going to believe this thing. I'm going to live it out. I'm going, to, I'm going to walk this. I'm going to walk it the way me and I seen it that had the Spirit of God walk. I'm going to walk the way that I saw men that, that, that showed that they had the Spirit of God, not said. Right. A lot of folks talking so much. They got so much mouth. They one way today and uh, another way tomorrow. And they was, and, 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 you know, ain't never changed from being saved. But everybody that, that they were saved around is unsaved now. Mm. But they still saved. Bible got you sold up. Yeah. Don't yeah. be tossed to and fro. Mm -hmm. uh, 14 verse. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Come on. By the slight of men. Come on. And cunning and craftiness whereby, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But what do we do? But speaking the truth in love. We speak the truth in love that mm -hmm. we might do what? May grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. This is how we come to the fullness of God. We grown up, we grown up in him by, by speaking the truth in love. Mm -hmm. Not just a bunch of mouth. Not just mouth. We're proving it with the love that we have. Give me the 13th chapter uh, of, uh, of uh, Corinthians. We want to speak the truth in love. We, we want to prove it out. Want to prove it out by righteousness. Mm -hmm. Want to prove it out by humility. Yes. Right? That's right. Come on, let's see what, 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 what love does. 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. Yes. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. Folks got a lot of mouth. Mm -hmm. And then he, he, when he went over there to Galatians, he said, not another gospel. That's right. Not another gospel. People going to come to you with great swelling words. You still got that Galatians mm -hmm. 1 and 6? I just want you to finish it up. I want people to see how important this is, how strong it is. Because people, they'll, they'll put a name at the end of somebody that called itself elder or called itself bishop or called itself some other you know, great title. Mm -hmm. Life is just such a wonderful thing. And then they'll say, and they say it like it means something. Mm -hmm. Galatians <laughs> 1 and 6. Come on. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into, into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Brother Paul said, you know, I, I just really marvel at this. It, it, don't make, he's, it don't make no sense to me. It's a marvel. <laughs> and that's what I say today. Mm -hmm. This thing is just a marvel to me. It makes no sense. That's right. See people jumping to and fro. With some other wind of doctrine, mm -hmm. I marvel. Mm -hmm. Well, so and so said it. So what? I marvel. Come on. That you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Come on. Which is not another. Not another gospel. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. And let me stop you right there. Don't trouble me. Don't even trouble. Don't even bring me what somebody else said because I'm not moving. They will trouble you and pervert the gospel of Christ. And then you sitting there with your ears open to mind. Well, you know, it, it is something to that. Uh -huh. This is what it is to it. Keep reading. But though we or an angel from heaven. Brother, Paul, and Brother Paul said, even if we. Mm -hmm. Though we. That's right. If we bring you some other gospel. Mm -hmm. Come on, or who else? We or an angel from heaven. Oh, and Brother Gabriel, the archangel. Uh -huh. Bring you another gospel. Preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Come on. Let him be accursed. And that's where I'm putting them. I'm putting them in the same trash can. That's right. 
Same trash, same garbage. Yes, I ain't interested. I ain't interested in a lot of this foolishness that's going on now. As I said before, I'm, I'm working on perfecting my love. Mm -hmm. You work on how many guards you're going to serve. I'm going to work on perfecting this, what I got. Uh -huh. that's right. You understand? You wanted me to know about you know, all these other guards. You might should have caught me about 40 years ago. That would have been long enough that I wouldn't have known nothing about the truth. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but I marvel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I marvel, read it, sir. That you are so soon removed from yes. him that call you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Come on, get back we, over to the 13th chapter of Corinthians. Talking about that love now. This, uh, we, we grow up in love. Mm -hmm. We're growing up in love. This is what love do. Come on. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. And Some people carried away with the tongue. Mm -hmm. Carried away with the tongue yep. of men and of angels. He, the, he's, though I do it with all of them. Mm -hmm. Come on. And have not charity. I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Vain. Vain. All that tongue and all that speaking, vain. That's right. Vain. A lot of people get carried away with that. They carry, they get, they, they'll jump, tossed into, tossed to and fro mm -hmm. with a wind of doctrine. Want to hear something different. Mm -hmm. Something to that. Yeah. But though he got all of that. Mm -hmm. And speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity. I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. God don't honor you. God's not on, honoring that. Read on, just a little bit more. And though I have the gift of prophecy. I got the gift of prophecy. Now, it didn't say that they might have it or look like prophecy. They say they got the That's gift right. of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Though I got it. Yes. And understand all mysteries. I know all the deep mysteries. All of them. And all knowledge. Come on. And though I have all faith. Got all, all of that. And they'll show it to you too, man. Show it to you, but you're looking at all of that thing, but you're not looking at what God is. Mm -hmm. But so that I could remove mountains and have not charity. Come on. I am nothing. If you got all of that and all faith to remove mountains and have not charity. I am nothing. Vain. All, all that stuff you got is just worthy for garbage mm -hmm. because God is, is going to be there to be burnt. That's, right. That's all it's going to be for. That's right. You know, it, it, it's like wood ready for the fire. That's all it's for. And a lot of people get carried away with all of those things and miss out on the charity. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not missing on the charity. I'm looking at that life and what charity brings. I'm looking at that, that is what is in a man to prove it out. I'm not worried about the mouth or what you know. If you know a billion scriptures, if there's a billion, I don't care what you know. If you ain't got charity, you're not a God. That's right. Bible said love is of God. Mm-hmm. And he that loveth is born of God, born of God and, and knoweth him. Right. But what about the ones that don't have love, don't have charity? They got a lot of scriptures, a lot of knowledge, a lot of faith. They move in mountains, can build big mega churches like that, man. You imagine somebody come through here and move Stone Mountain. Boy, he could build a following, <laughs> have you know, 100,000 members. And every last one of them will be lost. Mm. Few going to be that find this highway. Few going to be that find this, this straight way of God. It's few that's going to be going to find it. Because only few are looking for it. Amen. Too many folks looking for praise bands and, and seeing if you got a Starbucks at your church. Amen. Yes. But they're not looking for charity. That's right. What about charity? Keep going. Mm -hmm. You got to get through here. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. I give all my goods to feed the, for, the yes. poor. Let's, let's start another program. Mm. And you know, nothing wrong with that. Just like there's nothing wrong with prophecy. Right? Nothing wrong with faith. All of these things are gift. Mm -hmm. But if you have all of these things mm -hmm. and have not charity, you're nothing. That's right. I give all my goods to feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burned. Come on. And have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. I got to ask this question since I got my grandchildren here. What's the most important thing then that we're talking about this morning? What's most important? Charity. Wow. <laughs> How old are you? Ten. Ten-year-old can figure that out. Figure that out real quick. The most important thing is charity. Mm -hmm. Right? Having faith is really good. And it's part of God. We can't please God without it. But if you got faith and no charity, it, that's bogus. Mm -hmm. 
That's bogus. Read on just a little bit more. Uh, charity envieth not. Charity, it, it doesn't envy. Charity bunt is not itself. Not puffing itself up. Come on. Mm -hmm. It's not puffed up. Yeah. Does not behave itself unseemly. Char you know what? Charity is going to work like it, it ought to work. Mm -hmm. You're going you're gonna to walk like you ought to walk. That's right. Deacon Bobo ain't going to come in here one, one way today and another way tomorrow just unseemly. Y'all, you think on it. Man, you know, married, got a wife and a family, and then come in tomorrow, honey, you know, I just decided to get me another mistress. That's unseemly. Yes. I had a faithful marriage 10, 15 years, and just I just woke up, and I just thought that's what I would do. Mm. That ain't charity. You, don't love, you can't sit there and tell me, well, I love you, honey, but, but I think I need it more. But I still love you, and I think we ought to just make this work. Unseemly. That's right. Stupid. <laughs> Come on. Seek is not her own. Yes. Is not easily provoked. Come on. Think is no evil. Yes. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. These are the things that charity does. It doesn't, doesn't rejoice in, in things that are wrong. And that's what the world is now. World just hopping on. It, everything in this planet, it, it looks like it is so divisive now because people are rejoicing in iniquity. That's right. I hope this president go down. I'm going to fight what he's got. Stupidity. Don't you know when the president go down, guess what else go down? The country. Oh. And guess what else go down? The people. Yeah. That's right. A lot of time, your finances, yeah. your well-being. Mm -hmm. And we're praying that the president go down because he ain't my party. Nope. Foolishness. Rejoice in iniquity. Mm -hmm. Doesn't rejoice in the truth. That's right. Then another little gumdrop of wisdom. I call this thing the love virus. We got this love virus that continues on in the land now because we won't do that. That is the thing we won't do. We won't love one another. Because what people are doing, they're being divisive just like this. Mm -hmm. And first, they want to talk about itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want to wear a mask because it bothers me. Yeah. Talk, but what if it stops a virus? Talk, what does it save your child, your grandchild, or whatever? Amen. That's, right. Amen. That's right. Same way about the vaccine. I don't, I don't want to take the vaccine because I don't know what's in it. You know what? I never knew what was in Kool-Aid. My mama gave it to, to us all the time. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Coke, Sprite, yeah. right? <laughs> multivitamin. I, make sure you take a multivitamin. Uh -huh. Go eat in the restaurant. Don't have a clue what was done behind the wall. That's true. This love virus. When we decide that we're going to love one another this thing, now we'll do something about it. That's right. And that might have been God's mission for us. That might have been God's mission to see if we're going to care one for another. So if we don't want to care one for another, well, we just go down and perish with one another. Mm -hmm. And that looked like that's the choice that we make this day and time. Right? Mm -hmm. But that's a shame and disgrace, and it is not charity. That's right. It is not charity. Read on. Beareth all things. It beareth all things. Believeth all things. Believeth all things. Hopeth all things. Hopeth all things. Endureth all things. Yes. Charity never faileth. Yes. But whether there be prophecies, they shall they shall fail. Prophecies gonna fail. Mm -hmm. Where where there be tongues, they shall cease. Tongues gonna cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Knowledge is gonna vanish. All this stuff you know, and all these tongues, and all this power you think you got, all that stuff is gonna perish. Mm -hmm. But come on. For we know in part. We know some things in part. And we prophesy in part. Yes. But when that which is perfect is come. Yes. Then that which is in part shall be done away. We'll understand this thing. Come on. Mm -hmm. When I was a child, I spake as a child. Yes. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I put them childish things away. Read on. For now we see, we see through a glass darkly. Yes. But then face to face now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Yes. And now abide the faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. That's the same thing Jayla told us. Mm -hmm. See, it sounds like to her the most important thing is charity. That's right. Charity, to have love with one mm -hmm. for another. And I know we've moved from Ephesians 4, and we'll get back to that some other lesson. But this is part of the body of Christ. These things build up the body of Christ. This love that we have, it builds up the body of Christ. And it's going to prove it out. Mm -hmm. It's going to prove it out. And that's why I'm encouraging every man 
to get to repentance, uh-huh. get repentance in your life. Mm-hmm. Right? 2 and 38, and then we, we out. Acts 2 and 38. Mm-hmm. Get that in your life because God is, is not willing that any of us should perish. And That's I say right. it all the time, but that we all should come to repentance. That's right. That's what he's calling for. Mm-hmm. Let's get God in our life. Get some charity in our life. Read that. Acts 2, 38. Yes. Then Peter said unto them. Peter said unto them. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in now, the name I, of Jesus I want Christ. My, I want my young people to know these were the same people that just killed Jesus. Oh, they might not have physically did it, but they had the authority to help make it happen. You know, and you would think if you just killed Jesus, that God would just come down with lightning bolts and destroy all of them. That would be the, the just thing to do. But this is what God said about mm-hmm. it. Read on. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you. Right. When the people wanted to know what to do about this mistake we just made, mm-hmm. Peter said, repent. Just yeah. repent. And be baptized. Come on. Every one of you. In yes. the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. Get your sins removed. Now, yeah. now you're getting cleaned up by God. Right. God will remove them because you mm-hmm. can't move them yourself. That's right. You can try to walk clean all you want to, but if you're not going to follow God's teaching in, in faith in him through his teacher, yes, sir. Right. You're, you're not going to get sins removed That's because right. God can do that. Mm-hmm. I can't move them. Mm-hmm. Right? God's got to remove them. Yes. But if we repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for mm-hmm. the remission of sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then we can be part of God's body, part of his family. That's what I'm encouraging you, and I'm encouraging each and every one. Uh, let's strive to be a part of God's body. You know, let's um, jump, be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine that's coming out, because it, it, there's no end to it. Mm-hmm. No end to, this doc- to the doctrines that people are going to have. You know, they'll tell you, you need to read this book, need to read that Bible, need to read these lost books over here. No end to it. But toss to and fro when there's still only one body. That's right. Let's get to be a part of that. We truly thank God. We pray that we said something to encourage your heart. Get into these scriptures and, and, and you read these things for yourself. Don't let it look like what Elder Kemp said because Elder Kemp ain't saying. The scriptures are saying the same thing that I'm telling you are the same thing that El Cap has got to live by in order to see God in peace. That's right. And my aim is to see him in peace. So if I said something you didn't like and I read it in here, well, don't be upset with me. Take that out with God when you meet him. You understand? Because all of us going to meet him. That's right. <laughs> right? That's right. But we pray we said something that encourages your heart because we can make this journey. We can make this thing. We can be saved. Why come through here all this time, all your life, whether you live 50, 60, 70, 80 years? Or 90, whatever. Come through here all your life, and then when we meet God, don't be justified before him. So that's my encouragement to you. Let's be a part of God's body. This has been the St. James True Church of God in Christ. We thank you uh, for your patience. We're looking out for you, and you can depend on us.